So MLB The Show 21 is officially here. The game is live on all platforms. And this is the first time the game is officially on Xbox. So naturally, there's going to be a lot of new players coming into the franchise for the first time this year. So in this video, I'm going to give you guys my hitting tips that I use every single time I play the game. Now, let me tell you a little bit about myself as a player before you guys listen to my tips, just so you know where I stand. I am mainly an online first competitive head to head type of guy. So all the tips I'm going to be giving you guys in this video are going to be from the point of view of somebody who's trying to get better at the game in an online sense. These tips will still work in offline play, but just keep that in mind. And I've been playing MLB The Show online for about five or six years now. And at the end of MLB The Show 20, I was within the top 200 of the lifetime leaderboard. So I'm not the best player in the world by any means, but I like to think I'm a bit above average and I have a good idea of what's going on at the plate when I'm trying to hit. So let's go ahead and get started. So the best place in the game for you to practice all of these tips I'm going to give you and just practice anything really is going to be the custom practice mode. Basically, this mode lets you create any situation you can think of. So for example, you can go to practice type, you can go to team practice, and let's say you want to put a runner on first, a runner on third, you want there to be a 2-0 count with one out, and you press start, and boom, you got a guy on first, you got a guy on third, you got a 2-0 count with one out here, and then you just play it as the game plays it. Now, a cool addition they added to the mode this year is you can actually tell the game what pitches you want to see and what location you want those pitches to be at. So let's say you're not very good at hitting uh, outside sliders. So I go to practice type, I go to batting. I can tell the game to have Lucas Giolito only throw sliders on the outside zones. So then you press start. So now every pitch he throws will be a slider somewhere on the outside part of the plate. So this is going to be a good way for you to kind of hone your skills on a certain pitch that you might be struggling against. So I highly recommend taking advantage of the feature in this mode because this is going to be a pretty key way to get better. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Is that leaving? I can't trout move, bro. So with all that out of the way, let's get going on these tips. So the first big tip I have for you is to find your preferred camera angle. Now, the reason I'm saying find your preferred camera angle is because I know not everybody is going to like Strike Zone, and that's the camera that I use. And honestly, if you're trying to get better at the game, this is, in my opinion, the best one to use. Yes, you absolutely lose some presentation value. It's a little weird, especially if you uh, are not used to hitting on a zoom camera like this but the closer you are to the plate the closer you are to the strike zone the easier it is to recognize pitch break to recognize the location to recognize velocity and all those different type of things and yeah you can use other cameras but I think if you're really trying to get good and really trying to get a good feel of the strike zone strike zone camera is the way to go there's also strike zone 2 there's strike zone 3 I've seen people use different versions most of the time anybody who is playing this game at a higher level is using the strike zone camera but once again it's all personal preference find the one that works for you I highly recommend strike zone though okay the second tip is going to be using the correct hitting interface which I believe is zone there's three hitting interfaces in this game you've got zone you've got directional and you've got pure analog directional is kind of a pick up and play sort of interface it's easy to get started with the game that way pure analog you are going to be using the sticks to swing which when you have some of these other ones you don't really need to even use that zone is 100% the way to go because it gives you the most total control of your swing once again if you're trying to get better this is the one to use now with zone hitting you're gonna notice this thing that I'm moving around in the strike zone right here this is called the PCI I'm moving this around with the left stick and this does not represent the barrel of your bat I think it represents your swing plane or something like that but the idea of zone hitting is you want to move this around and try to get this where you think the pitch is going to end up so let's see what he throws here Slider away. Boom. I got the PCI pretty good on that. And that's a bomb actually. Hang on. I just realized I still have him throwing nothing but outside sliders. Let's go to everything. But anyway, the reason I'm talking about the PCI is you want to try to find a PCI that works for you. And the reason I'm telling you that is because if you go to your options and you go to gameplay and you're on batting and base running, you scroll down, you can actually customize the PCI to exactly what you want. So I use diamonds on the center. I use basic on the inner. I use none on the outer. I use 
the white color with 100% transparency and I don't fade out anything, but this is all personal preference. The PCI is going to work exactly the same no matter what yours looks like. So just find the one that you're comfortable with. So let me throw a random one on right here. Let's go altitude with uh, starfighter on the inner. Let's go reverb on the outer. Let's go ocean with... 50% capacity and fade out just or 50% transparency and just fade out the outer ring and let's see what it looks like here See it looks different than the one I'm using it's gonna work exactly the same But everyone's gonna have a PCI that they feel more comfortable with so play around with the settings and find the one that you like the best Okay, so the next tip I have for you guys is understand the swing feedback so the swing feedback is this little uh piece of information that comes up either in the bottom left hand corner of the screen or the bottom right hand corner of the screen and the feedback gives you a lot of information so if you look you can see the batter you can see their attributes against the handedness of the pitcher you can see their swing timing the pitch location the PCI you can also see the wind down underneath there you can see the launch angle and the exit velocity when it looks at the results so you want to look at that piece of information you want to look at the feedback because in theory that should tell you what you're doing wrong on any particular swing now it's baseball you're gonna get some weird results it's not always gonna make sense so you can see right there it was a high and inside pitch it was a four seam fastball I was late on it I only got 82 exit velocity on it because I was a little bit jammed you don't want to be late on that pitch so basically you just want to get familiar with that information because it's telling you a lot about the swing and about the result so just keep your eyes on that when you're playing the next tip I have for you guys is gonna be kind of going off the feedback and it's all gonna be about your swing timing. MLB the show show in the past has been a little bit notorious for certain swing timings feeling like they're giving you better results than others and I know in baseball it's all situational like you don't want to be late on an inside pitch and you don't want to be early on an outside pitch and so on and so forth but at least last year in MLB the show 20 it always felt like the earlier you were the better your results were and I'm talking even pitches on the outside part of the plate if you played MLB the show 20 you probably saw countless times people pulling low and away pitches on a very early swing for a home run early was definitely the way to go so my tip for you guys when we're talking about the timing here is do your absolute best to pull anything on the inside part of the plate and honestly anything down the middle too because you want to take away the inside part of the plate that's just basic you want to force the pitcher to have to use both halves of the plate but also with MLB the show's mechanics usually it just works a little bit better if you're more on the early side than on the late side I mean I can't even tell you guys the amount of results I've had where I've hit a fly ball with like a really good PCI and I'm just barely on the late side of that perfect bar and the ball is just like a routine fly out versus if I was on the early side it was probably crushed so try your best to be more early on pitches than late I know that might sound kind of weird when you're talking about baseball and you know you don't always want to be early on everything but in the game with the way MLB the show's mechanics work sometimes it's more helpful than not. Alright, moving on to the next tip. This one is going to be all about discipline. And what I mean about discipline is build up an ability to take pitches. You don't want to be that guy that's swinging at every single pitch, even if they're strikes. The reason discipline is such a big deal is because if you hold down R2 when the pitcher is on the rubber, you can see it brings up the pitch selection. And above the pitch selection, you have the energy and confidence meters. Energy is pretty self-explanatory. The more pitches he throws, the more energy he's going to lose. But the confidence meter is something that you need to keep your eye on. So if Lucas Giolito throws me a strike right here, if he throws me a fastball down the middle, boom, there you go. That's gonna make his confidence go up, but not by a ton. Now, if he were to throw me another strike right here, and I were to swing, or even worse, if it's a ball and I swing, that's gonna make his confidence go up even more because he's gonna be like, oh, I fooled him, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good right now. So you wanna be able to take pitches, even if it's a strike, because the more pitches he throws, not only is his energy going down, but the more chances the pitcher has to throw pitches outside of the zone for you to work counts. And if he starts getting into deeper counts, into more hitter friendly counts that's gonna make his confidence go down and it's gonna amplify the chance of him making a mistake and I could give you guys all the tips in the world but honestly I think the thing that's helped my game more than anything is just the discipline being patient a lot of people uh, who play me <laughs> sometimes they get a little frustrated because of the amount of pitches I take because I have a pretty good feel for the strike zone but if you have that ability and you can make the guy throw more pitches you're gonna knock pitchers out of the game early you're gonna hopefully 
actually see more mistake pitches, especially this year with pinpoint pitching. A lot of people are going to be using that online. People are going to be a little bit more susceptible to making mistakes. Add that on top of pitch confidence. Dude, if you're taking pitches and swinging at good pitches in the zone, you're gonna be all right. And kind of going off the same thing for the next tip, be comfortable with hitting in two strike counts. Like I said, it kind of goes off the discipline and working the count and stuff, but if a guy gets it to an 0-2 count or a 1-2 count, it's really not the end of the world in MLB The Show, because it's not like real life where if you're on an, uh, a two strike count, you know, in MLB The Show, you don't choke up on the bat, you don't really need to get much more defensive, because honestly, with a lot of the PCIs in this game, you should be able to get to anything at any count. So once again, don't be afraid to to take pitches don't be afraid to get in two strike counts trust your input trust your thumb on the analog right there because honestly the more pitches you see the better you're gonna get at the plate and the last really big tip I can give you guys is uh, find your own weaknesses. Everybody's gonna have their own weaknesses when it comes to hitting in this game. Like, some people have their weakness of uh, dropping the PCI on everything they see, or not getting their timing down. If those are things that you know you're not very good at, go to custom practice and try to see those. Once again, going back to the dropping the PCI, let's go ahead and say I want him to throw it only in high zones. Obviously, I'm gonna know that, but I'm gonna go ahead and approach it just like I would a normal at bat and try not to drop my PCI because a lot of people have that problem no matter where it is in the zone they drop their PCI and it causes a lot of pop-ups it causes a lot of bad results so you can kind of work on that here another thing with that is find your PCI placement pre-pitch so like if you know you're consistently late on inside pitches start your PCI inside and take away that part of the plate so like just for example I'm gonna go ahead and sit inside Throws me a pitch inside, and yeah, it was a circle change, but at the end of the day, I was ready for it because I was sitting inside and I wasn't late. So just find your weakness, whether it's PCI placement, whether it's timing, whether it's anything, just figure that out, be honest with yourself as a player, and then work on those things in custom practice. And I think the last tip I'll give you guys is hit on legend difficulty. Now, I know you might freak out when you see that because legend difficulty is very intimidating. The PCIs are going to get smaller, the pitch speeds are going to get faster, but if you're able to square up some stuff consistently on legend, it's going to make every other difficulty so much easier. And yeah, I, I think that's all the major tips I have for you guys. A lot of this game is timing, it's, uh, you know, PCI placement. That, that's really the name of the game when it comes to hitting if you're using zone, which I think you should be. But other than that, it's a lot of personal preference and it's a lot of just utilizing the features in the game to try to make yourself better. I always plug this in my hitting tips videos. I don't count it as a tip because, you know, I feel like that's kind of weird, but I do use control freaks on my controller over on the left stick. I use an Inferno control freak. If you don't know what control freaks are, they're basically joystick extensions. A lot of people use them for first person shooting shooters, but MLB is a very precise game when it comes to your analog and input. So control freaks definitely help out a lot. I highly recommend them if you want to pick up a pair. I use the Infernos and you can use code Coogs and save 10%. So let me know in the comments if any of these tips have helped you out. I love seeing the comments every year where people are coming in and saying, dude, like I wasn't really seeing the ball and your tips helped out a lot. So if that's the case, be sure to let me know that in the comments. I post MLB The Show content all year long, daily videos. So if this is a game you guys like and you want to see some content every single day, make sure to hit that sub button. I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you enjoyed the hitting tips video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.